Hey, this is Vu, and recently my clip on AIM versus GameSense has been the basis of a lot of debate. Basically, the the reality of CS is everyone wishes CS was like this like fucking cool chess game, but at the end of the day, if one team shoots the other team better in the head, they can basically just run around like fucking absolute morons and, and win. Now, I will admit this is a pretty basic way to look at the concept, however, just about every MDL and above player I know mostly or entirely agrees. But to convince you, let me start by looking at what actually is aim. Well, at the most basic aim is, well, aim. It's your ability to point and click when people are on your screen. However, when you're playing an enemy, what do you think of as their aim? Well, the answer is probably that their entire package of mechanics will seem to you to be their aim. It's the question of how fast do they kill me when we take a straight up engagement. This is really the basis of my statement in that clip. So I think the basis of a lot of the debate comes down to the definition of aim and the definition of game sense. Is your aim simply your point and click ability or is it your entire package of mechanics? Mechanics being movement, aim, and recoil control. I think for the most part, while it seems counterintuitive, because those have such a bearing on aim, it has to be the entire package. All right, so let's take a look at a play for a minute. Here we've got a little noob named Vu. That can't be right. Whatever. He's got a fantastic player here. He's lurked through a smoke. He's directly behind someone and now he's dead. Okay, okay, I get it. It's th that's a ridiculous example, but it is relevant to keep in mind. It doesn't matter how good your game sense is if you simply can't shoot your opponent. This actually applies to a higher level than you might think as well. You can often see this in the highest levels of semi-pro gameplay, especially if the opposing team can simply out-aim you, they can push everything and you will absolutely struggle. Think back to a time when Liquid was actually good and they played a tier 2 team. This struggle is something most IGLs will know as making your opponent respect you or something along those lines, where if your opponent can simply push every angle and win 40-60 gunfights against you, there's no reason for them to stop, and if they don't stop, you can't begin playing overly tactically. They'll just continue pushing and flank you anytime you set up a strat. The standard way to counter this is to run a competent default without having your players get picked off. This will literally require you to actually be able to win some reasonably straight up gunfights. That's kind of the point of a default. Don't give up too many openings to enemy oppers and set your riflers into engagements that they should win or trade. All right, so if you don't win enough of the engagements you should, you're not gonna be able to get much done. Of course, we already knew that. The basic concept here though is that aim is the base skill of Counter-Strike. No matter how smart you play, if your opponent's mechanics are enough better than yours, you are going to lose. In fact, your game sense may even hurt you because your opponents will simply push things in ways that make little to no sense and you shouldn't generally be expecting. Let's take a game I played recently to showcase this. This is a group of Face It 10s versus a five stack of MDL players, several of whom I coached fairly recently. I should be able to stand up on two feet game sense wise, you would think. However, we got rolled over 16-3. You can see if we take a look at round 10 here, they go for a B rush and then a market rush and then a CT rush through a Molotov. Uh, not exactly a ton of super smart play being made there. Now, obviously they are fighting against pistols, but you can see that part of the problem is that you're not expecting them to run through a molly, you get caught off guard, and they destroy you because they already know they can push those angles and win disadvantageous gunfights to begin with. All right, so you can't get anywhere without some aim. Cool story, Vu. Here's a question though. Is crosshair placement aim or game sense? I found that this question actually gets to the bottom of some of the debate. If crosshair placement is aim, it seems pretty natural that the game primarily revolves around aim. If crosshair placement is game sense, well, that's a lot of what goes into your aim, so surely the game is more about game sense. And it seems to depend who you ask. Surprisingly to me, the results of the poll on Twitter I did on this were very close, with game sense only coming out on top with 60% of the vote. The problem is that crosshair placement is a bit of both and is really the reason it's hard to answer whether aim is more important than game sense. Not that crosshair placement requires more than the most basic level of aim to execute, but that your aim will dictate where your crosshair should be, where you can position, and more than that as well. Your aim and game sense are nearly inseparable. Let's take a look at a couple of players that are slightly worse than me, Zipnix and Esetag, the classic Astralis combination from six months ago when I wrote this. The reason I'm looking at these two players isn't which player is better, it has a lot more to do with the angles they take in their defense. If we take a look at Zipnix holding ramp on nuke, you can see that there are a few specific angles he enjoys playing. You'll note these angles are very close to cover and extremely non-committal. 
like my relationships. It's very easy for Zipnix to use these angles to make contact and quickly drop into lower and survive, as good ramp layers typically should. On the other hand, Esetag is willing to take some slightly more aggressive engagements, which are a bit more committed, and he's willing to stay longer, as well as hold on to his utility a little bit longer as well. Alright, Esetag has better aim, but there's obviously some requirement of game sense to correctly apply your aim to the best of its ability. If Esetag played the angles that Zipnix played, he likely wouldn't be able to clutch quite as effectively, so he'd be selling himself short as a player. The ability to recognize and capitalize on the engagements that your aim allows you to take is at the core of what makes a player great. Would Simple be better if he took the engagements that a player like Crystal takes? Obviously not. That doesn't mean Crystal should take different engagements, it means that Simple's aim allows him to utilize his game sense in a different manner. I actually have a pet theory that this is a large part of why players often seem to fall off a cliff in skill as they get older. It's not that their reaction or hand-eye coordination gets significantly worse over just a few years, it's that they get slightly worse due to aging or more likely due to a slight change in life priorities, and these players struggle to reinvent themselves when they find that they need to adjust the distance they hold their crosshair from the corner, the angles they're able to play, and the engagements they're able to comfortably take with a high percentage of winning. If we were to take a look at a player that has stuck around in the pro scene for years and years, I think it's very likely you'll find that they've adapted at least slightly, unless their device. This has actually been something that I've noticed as a fundamental change when trading between two players on a team I was coaching a few seasons ago. We traded our very low fragging IGL out for a player that some of you may have heard of, Swisher. The most notable change was on T-side overpass defaults outside of B. Rather than replicate what the previous player had been doing on defaults, holding very passive outside of monster, essentially trying not to die, Swisher's aim allowed him to play a more dynamic and aggressive style, often taking a bit of space on the map on rounds where he was alone. Of course, occasionally this would get him punished, but on average it would give our team significantly more map control, and it created a new dynamic the team could use to our advantage. To be honest, the team still kind of sucked. But the addition of Swisher, a player that wasn't an extreme upgrade in terms of game sense, though a casual observer would likely think that, added a dynamic that did significantly increase our T-side win rate on the map. The story here isn't that he was a much smarter player, it's that his aim allowed him to utilize his game sense in a different way, while the previous player knew that his best bet was simply to hold monster and try not to die. Anyways, back on topic. Aim and game sense are pretty hard to separate, so let's take a look at a couple of plays from the king of don't play like this himself, Simple and see if there's a lot of validity to that claim. How much game sense does Simple really have? Well, I've already kind of answered that myself in a different video. Maybe you would have seen it if you'd been subscribed. Go ahead, I'll wait. The round I want to take a look at here is from Navi versus Astralis, round number nine. The beginning of the round here isn't that important, but we end up in a spot where Simple and Electronic are in a 2v2 retake versus Magisk and Dupree. Rather than play passive and allow Electronic to make his way closer forward, Simple takes an aggressive stance and phases through the coffin smoke, getting aggressive early with some information as to their locations. Because of his confidence in his ability to win the gunfight while going through that smoke, Simple manages to find a timing where he can catch Magisk off guard, and then lose the round. But regardless, this is a play where he managed to catch an opponent off guard with the timing that he managed because of his confidence in his aim. This is where things really get murky in the aim versus game sense debate. It's not that someone else couldn't have made that play, it's that they may not have had the confidence in their ability to win the gun duel, to play as aggressively as he did there, and catch the player off guard, new box, that wasn't ready for the timing. Okay, so basically I've done a good job of muddying the waters, aim and game sense, who even knows? The answer to this question really doesn't matter all that much, but in my opinion, you do need to turn this into a bit of a formula. The way I think of this is to understand that your aim and game sense typically likely need to reach a baseline minimum, and at that point there is a lot of play on the in-between. No matter how good your aim is, you have to have a baseline competent level of game sense or you'll never be able to go pro. At the extreme, for an example, if you're running in looking the wrong direction, unless you're spinbotting, you're never going to get any kills. Unless you're playing happy in 2015. Similarly, if you run up behind someone and miss every shot, you'll die as well. With this in mind, if we can rate your aim and game sense on a scale from 0 to 100, you likely need both of these to be at a baseline within 15-20% to 20 of your opponents for the other to even come into play, and from there you have game on. If your aim is good enough to at least win 60-40 engagements, then you're talking. Anyways, this is just a long video to say nobody cares. Head on over to my Patreon, patreon.com slash sub to the Patreon, sub to the channel, like the video, peace out.